a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman, you have sitting in for Larry Pesavento. Larry's out there in Las Vegas. In fact, someone sent, uh, sent over a picture of Larry uh, doing his workshop there. Uh, let's see. Let me just see. Cause, okay. I just wanted to, I had a question about this in my show, the Tiger Technicians Hour earlier. PC. Did I just type that into the 10? Yes, I did. Uh, PCT. <clears throat> PCT is the uh, Pure Cycle Tech Inc. recycles contaminants into pure polypropylene. And what we're looking at here is it was had a spectacular session yesterday after closing on Friday at uh, 516. PCT is the symbol. Uh, it gapped up and screamed. Said, yeah, we are. We're toodle, 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 right around 519 uh, it closes. It opens at 560 screams to uh opens at 560 has a high of 654 slams down to 553 and then closes at 556 not very good action but the fact that it didn't fill the gap was a positive and what we're looking at is what happens next and what i'd said I, if i recall correctly i said if it fills the gap, that's one thing. It's going to have an inside day, and I think we just left it at that. Wow. This morning, it opens at uh, 5.65. Remember, yesterday it closed at 5.56. At, uh, so it opens at 5.65, and then it kind of toodles around, tests the 5.57 low, and then... It screams up to 643, and right now it's trading at 638. So there are a couple of techniques that I, I do. In fact, if you're interested in some of the techniques that you see me do here at uh, whenever I fall in for Larry's time or whatever, if you my show, the Tiger Technicians Hour, you will see that what I've done here is I've taken two trend lines, parallel lines, a little mini channel. And the reason why I don't keep it only as a single line is because I want to show how often a price can pull back from a certain level in that trend line, trend line meaning a straight line, and keep coming back to it, but be repelled. But you need a little room. So I give it a little room here, and I make this pink to say that's the area that where it gets repelled by. It did that. Look, three times it went into this little area here. And then uh, yesterday popped up. It stalled at the pink line. The green line is the outer line. And we'll see what happens, because if, let's just say, it doesn't make a new high above the high of yesterday of 560, uh, 654, but tomorrow it goes to 655, that starts a new leg C. And it's a very complex C, because you've already had from the low that was made back at uh, 3, at, uh, was it 4.44 on the 9th, it's had a number of rallies and failed keeps coming back down, but it hasn't taken out that low. So this is really your starting point. I can't put an up arrow in because the stochastic's very poor. It's at 16%. If it was over 80%, I would immediately put an up arrow and say this should go higher. But I can't do that. The MACD even is weak. The moving average convergence diverges. On balance volume is running a little bit, but basically is, is not as strong as it was. So we'll see what happens here. But basically what would happen is if this went above, not today, but tomorrow. If it does a day, it just extends leg B. But let's just say it stores it under 654. It doesn't go to 654. It goes stores it 653. And tomorrow, it suddenly spikes up. If it spikes strong enough to go over the high, the little doji candle high of the 31st of March, remember, we're talking about PCT, uh, Pure Cycle Tech, Inc., 
and it's trading up 81 cents right now at 631. If on uh, Thursday or Friday it screams over the, the high that was made right here on the 31st of $7.25, and it does it in this move, having made a peak B, that'll be an overlapping wave that says not only are you in leg C, but you should still go to a D. That would be extremely positive. Right now, it's just stalling in a sideways range. If you actually look at it in terms of a rectangle, I'll just grab this and show you what I mean. Look, it's just stuck in this rectangle, going to the top, going to the bottom, going to the top. can do that quite for quite a while. The fact that it, it continued back up today as if yesterday was an accident, but then they thought about it and said, hey, no, that was really, that, that was something. This is filling in what was missing yesterday, follow through to the upside. So yes, that's good. I've got the 120 minute chart here. It's not telling me all that much other than it was looking a little weak earlier on. Now it's had a big spike and uh, that's helping the technicals. So I just wanted to show you that it was a question and um, the 200 period moving average of 742 was extreme resistance that a whole conglomerate of, of price movement back in January into early February and then it failed. And it failed because, look, the high that was made at, on the 23rd of January of $9, no, $10.04. Look how strong the MACD was. Look how strong the stochastic was, the unbalanced volume. And yet look what happened when that rebound, that rebound occurred on nothing. The, the volume wasn't there. Unbalanced volume was a little lower. The, the stochastic was way, way lower in the 50, under 50%. The MACD had turned negative. The nine, the nine period moving average was about to turn down. It was it was still good actually, and then it turned down. Now talk about the nine period moving average. I thought I'd just do this as as a brief overview for some of you who don't know my work. What I'm uh, what I like to uh, do when I have a chance is to show. Let me see. There's another question. Oh, the cues. Okay, so a question came in. Uh, is this possibly an Eiffel Tower movement? So, and I didn't know what it was referring to, but it was the QQQ. Well, the Eiffel Tower is when the price goes straight up and then almost immediately comes straight down and looks like an uppercase A or um, it looks like the Eiffel Tower. Roop, straight up, roop, straight down. And that's a failure pattern. So this has the characteristic, in a sense, from that spike up. It's like a, a pyramid where you went up and now you come down. But all I can say is that the cues, uh, no, it, it has to be, it's like in the morning when you get your, I wonder if I've got some of them over here. I, I know we did have it, but I think I've run out. I, I, I have, uh, let me just scroll to the, no, it was, it was earlier, it was last week, we had those 8.30 and then 10 o'clock spikes to the upside and failure pattern. I suppose you can call it here. Yeah, look, if you were looking at the price of the um, E-mini at the open, uh, this is at 9.13 on the, what date was that? On the 26th. What are we now? We're at the 20. Oh, that's this morning. There was a pop to the upside. And then a failure. Yeah, it looks something like this, straight up and then straight down. Ah, I've got better. Uh, th this one's even better. This peak E, straight up and straight down. So, yeah, that, it's, it, it's a different pattern, but I understand what you mean. And what I would, will say is, and this is uh, oh, the first segment's already done. So the arch formation is really what I'm going to talk about, how the time lapse, the time sequence from the left side, number of bars to the right side can equal when it breaks down. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chapman sitting in for Larry Pesavento's hour. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com.
TFNN, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. C C call now. Toll free at 1 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Folks, Basil Chapman. Yeah, Dow's down 56, S&P's up five. A little divergence there. And thank you in the YouTube, uh, uh, TFN YouTube, Pure Cycles flagship polypropylene uh, purification plant reaches mechanical completion. All right, I guess that that really helped. Okay, so there are patterns that I look at all the time, and the patterns are referable or transferable to all all the charts that we're looking at. Look, I've I I like to look at straight line. There's a straight line. I like to look at straight line up or down. I like to look at the cup formation or the V-shaped formation or the arch formation. The arch formation, in this case, number one and three are mixed straight line down. It makes an arch formation and doesn't take out that left side low. That says there could be another bounce for another arch that looks like a lowercase h that goes to a lowercase m. And if it falls at a peak a or b, watch out below because it could go much deeper. Well, this is Schwab, Charles Schwab. Charles Schwab. Someone mentioned uh, Charles Schwab I think, in the uh, uh, YouTube TFN. Yeah, look at this. So my, my reasoning was within Charles Schwab, we saw that massive move down on the 13th of March to the round number. I always look at round numbers, 45 round number low, but it was an accelerated move with a huge volume spike and then a turnaround and then a gap up. And what I'd said is, in my work, I follow this very often, not all the time, but often enough to say that when a particular chart that you're looking at has this huge rollover, and then this final climactic culmination of a move down, especially if there's a round number. If immediately afterwards, there's a move above the gap high of that bar that made the low with this massive volume, but it has to be massive volume, can't be 10%, 20%. It's just got to be like it hasn't seen that kind of volume almost ever, or at least for the year. Um, and then what I look at is Chapman Wave price volume climactic reversal. And that says that the price can go for 28 bars. 28 bars, doesn't matter whether it's a daily, weekly, whatever. I usually do it only on daily. I have done it on weekly, but that's it's just too far by time. I've already forgotten what the heck I was doing. This is daily work. It works better. But if after 28 days, it's nice, sharply above the gap down bar high. In other words, above, in this case, 50. I should have typed in. I keep talking about it. 54.90. 
then there's a good chance you can go another 28 days. You can go 56, I usually say 52, but it's actually 56 days without taking out that low and actually having a really decent rally. Look, Charles Schwab stalled. It's made an, a, this lowercase h went to a lowercase m. This is a really key moment because in the next two weeks, if Charles Schwab takes out 45, wow, that's not going to be good at all. And if you look at the XLF, which is the financial ETF, in the Chapman methodology, we're always looking for the lowest low bar and then count each successively higher peak, alphabetize them sequentially, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, uppercase on the way up, lowercase on the way down. But if you can get a buy signal that's upgraded to buy mode with eight, out taking your out your original starting point, even if it's by one penny, it's it's you got to start all over again. Then I expect to go to at least four higher peaks to a peak D. That's where other things can happen. Well, this is look XLF, the financial ETF, went to a low bar. It went. To, I should have typed that in. I'll type it in now. It went to thirty thirty nine on the twenty fourth. So at thirty thirty nine, thirty nine on three twenty four twenty three, that was a low bar. And the, the MAGD moved up the circuit. Now, Larry doesn't use any of these techniques. Larry has a different set of parameters. He looks at A to B equals C to D. He looks at Fibonacci. He looks at um, his Gartley. Uh, his, it, these are aspects that I sometimes draw in to say, hey, look, because if you have a very good, if you have a bona fide um, technique, it should be complemented by other good techniques. So let me just show you this. So from this low at 30.39 on the 24th of March, we've gone peak A, B, C, and we got to that requisite D. And the MACD was good. Stochastic was over 80%. On balance volume was not great, but it did confirm it. The relative strength, the little gray line in this, in this daily chart on the left, did move up. Now it's moving down. So when you put this together, one of the reasons why, when I was, uh, when as we were moving and I'll do this uh, just briefly because I've done it a couple of times. So people know who've listened to me know this very well. And my subscribers certainly know this as well. When the nine period moving average is so far above the 14 period moving average, and in this case, both of them are way above the 200 period moving average and the 50 moving average, then it takes a long time for a sell signal to occur. In other words, if you get to your D, but the nine is still way over the 14, unless there's such bad news that you just collapse like the Dow down 900 or 1,000 points in, in one day, you, you get a stall and it takes time to, it's like distribution is unfolding and you've still got your buyers, but you've got your sellers and they're fighting with one another and you get these tiny candles. Well, look at this, it's only yesterday that you got the big red candle closing under the 14 period moving average and we went to a sell signal with a down arrow. Not yet a sell mode, maybe by the end of the day, I'll have to say it's a sell mode, but so far we haven't got that sell mode, meaning it's a deeper correction than just a sell signal. But that nine is starting to get closer and closer to the 14. But wait a minute, look what happened in the S&P. The S&P did go to that 4169.48 level with a long-legged doji with a fractional move higher. And the nine period moving average here was way, way better than the, um, the 14 period moving average. But the MACD started to turn down. The stochastic was not as high as it was. The unbalanced volume gave, gave a third peak that said, just be careful. But my other work that I do both with the DOG, that's the, uh, the DOG is the one-to-one -one short the uh, the Dow, as opposed to the diamonds one to one long, said to me, you know what? There's a really good chance that we're making some kind of a top here that's really important. So we, for subscribers, we went short the S and P via the uh, S P X S three times short. We got a, a a small position in that, but a small position of a three times long is still a big position. Um, and the reason being, it everything about this was saying. 
with the SMHs, the semiconductors, I like to put a package together to, to confirm all the other technicals. Look, the semiconductors, which usually lead the market up and lead the market down, were failing. They failed in March, way earlier. They've been making dreaded H patterns, that H pattern that we're talking about. Here's a lowercase h, they went to a lowercase m, and it failed. And now there's a larger H pattern, and it's it's very close to failing. Yes, your Chapman Wave inside wedge, target, support line. So... Everything about this says there should be a digestive phase or a consolidation phase, depending on the time. But until the Dow sees the nine close under the 14 period moving average, it's all a process. But we are starting to get these sudden accelerations to the downside. So with that said, I wanted to say that's the daily chart. Look, the weekly charts are still holding really well. Look at this, this is the weekly chart of the semiconductors, and that's the worst looking ones, except the IWM is probably worse. But look at this, the, the Dow weekly chart, and I had questions about this, I'll answer it in this way here. The weekly chart got to the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone, got repelled yet again. Look how many times it just gets to that inside track and it gets repelled. But the nine is still over the 14. The MACD could deflect lower, but it hasn't yet. Stochastics is 76%. Dow's down um, 89. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman for the 1 o'clock to 2 o'clock hour. I'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. Basil Chapman. I just wanted to show you some of the charts, some of the work that I do, and how it, it correlates. Uh, yesterday, I had a question about BIIB, which is... Uh, 
Uh, this is Biogen Inc. Used to have it all notated, but I did the uh, the daily. There's a technique that I use called the Chapman Wave Instant Restart at your fourth highest peak D. If there is a, a, a candle that moves higher than the previous that peak D, the leg D high, within three days, it, it's a technique that I developed years ago called the Instant Restart. And that says you could, all you need to do now is have a parallel count, meaning the new count will be E, but it'll be E slash A possibly, and then F is an F slash B. It goes on like that till it gets to G slash C. Then it should even get to a D. Well, this gave that, with, and the reason was that the nine period was so strong over the 14. The MACD, look at this nine period differential above the MACD, the red, the slow moving 26 period moving average. Look how strong, look at this. This is almost like a Chapman wave squash with a stochastic powered higher over 80% with the MACD, with the price. And that says you should go to at least a, a very quick peak ABC and then D comes a little later. Well, not only that, look what happened. It had a second, this is what's so beautiful about this technique, can get you to a second peak D. And here it is, D and then it stalls, makes a little dirty candle, pops to an E and the 295 area. And I was asked about it yesterday. I said, is it time to nibble? I said, no, not yet. And look, it went even deeper. It went from 295 to 274. And now it's at 280, a nice rebound. But also look at the weekly chart. Look at the difference between the week of uh, in 2022, the week of December the 2nd, where it went to the high of uh, 311.88. Look how strong the MACD and stochastic were. But look what's happened this week. It's a red candle, but it's got only, it's, we've got half the week to go, right? We've just had a half the week, and it's the 295.25 high. But the MACD hasn't yet crossed positive, and the stochastic's under 80%. So it's not bad, but it's saying it's not quite as strong. So I'd be a little careful. And yes, if they're waiting for FDA approval of something, that's just another ball game altogether because it's in the biotech area. <clears throat> so I wanted to show you that. But also what I showed you was, look what happened with wheat. Now, unfortunately, uh, these... Notations are all mine. I do it by hand. They're not automated. So when the continuous contracts get smoothed out, I have to. the price is vertically 100% correct, but they move. They slide up or down. So in this case, there's your lowercase h. Remember the dreaded h that we were talking about? If you take out the left side low, but then what happened is it made another arch. That's the lowercase m. Now it's taken out. Now you've got to be careful because we could go one to one to the downside, which says the 630 area could, in fact, be the next target. It's a 643. It is up four uh, and a half. Uh, I don't know where it's up four and a half today, but that's what it says. And looking at uh, soybean, uh, there's your arch formation. Went to peak A, then a B. And now it's arching over. It's under the 200 period moving average. Last time it went a few bars under the days, under the 200, then it sprang to the upside. Let's see what happens now. But the technicals are actually on the way down. So we're going to be watching this very closely. And the weekly chart says, uh-oh, you've made your peak F, and now you're making another arch formation that could be a failure. But then the monthly chart rectangle says, hey, don't worry about it. You're just stuck between 1536 and uh, 1300 in the continuous contract. You can just stay there for a while. And then you're looking at corn, and corn says, we've gone, what, what, what's the notation? It went to, there's your starting point right there. Of course, that slipped because it got smoothed out. I'll just do it real quickly. You've got peak A, peak B, peak C, and there's your peak D, the fourth highest peak, and it's just above the previous high. So what's happened is it's pulled back, and today the 9 has just crossed negative under the 14. The, the price is under the 200. So it's just be real careful at uh, 602. Um, there's a chance that if it takes out 594, this is a continuous contract. It could go even lower towards this low right here, 580, um, around about 584. So that's what we're looking at. I just wanted to show you some of the techniques. Now, soybean, I'm sorry, sugar had a spectacular move, and it never stopped. And look at this. Using just one technique. In fact, let me just, no, I'll do this. When the nine-period moving average crossed over on the 25th of January, 2023, and, and the price was, let's go to the high, and let's call it 18. To this day, 
that nine period moving average, even with the consolidations, it's never crossed back to pink. It's only stayed green. You could have stayed long, and even to this very minute, even though there's a leg E and it looks extremely overbought based on the on balance volume, you could still be holding it long because even the weekly chart is, is very strong in leg C and the monthly chart. So I like to use these techniques. It keeps you in a trade much longer than you would anticipate based on just this one little simple technique. So I like to talk about these things. So that's the sugar. Sugar is screaming. So you can imagine what's happening to cookies and stuff. So why would uh, something like a General Mills, uh, do they do cookies and stuff? Uh, Cheerios, Annie's, and other fruits, General Mills, at a, at a high, at an all-time high. Yesterday, in fact, uh, pulling back from a leg D, going to a peak D, um, they're going to be impacted at some point with higher prices. They can't just keep pushing it on to the consumer when it comes to cookies, just like Ulta Beauty. People do make a little sacrifice. They're prepared to go a little longer. Look at Ulta Beauty. Um, look at the way it's walked. It's nine-period exponential moving average in the monthly chart since it crossed positive back in January of 2021 in the 290 area, sorry, yeah, 280 area, and here it is at 546, and there's no sign in the monthly chart of it even turning down. Look at the stochastic is at 95%. I mean, in the monthly chart, that is incredible. And the on-balance volume is a tad overbought, but it's been like that for a while. The MACD is good. So it, you can use these things to your advantage. I just wanted to show you that one of the, one of the many techniques I'll be talking about in my uh, webinar coming up uh, a week from today is how to use these things. And uh, I, I, I believe that a lot of people use it, I mean, based on, on my workshops, etc. But it, it applies to one-minute charts as well. Look, the one-minute chart went to a peak D in the E-mini at 12.10 uh, this morning, Eastern Time, at 41.09.75. Uh, Earlier on, I said, if it can get to 41.08 and 41.10, that's going to be key. Well, it got there, and then it did this exact price time reversal. Look at this. The number of bars to the upside almost equaled the number of bars to the downside. It actually beat it by four minutes, five minutes, took out that left side low. This is the Chapman Wave inside uh, wedge target support line i usually make it uh, green with dashed line just so that you can see it i like to do these things so that it's visually easy to see there's your arch formation then it went to the lowercase h that goes to a lowercase m took out the left side low and look at this from this moment right here at 108 this, this afternoon at 4097 um it went pink and stayed there until just a little while ago it flipped to green so you can use these things this is accompanying the other techniques that you might want to use so another one is the rectangle formation look how long the 10 minute chart has stayed in this rectangle formation between 41 uh 4109 and basically 4087 i'll be back in a moment oh time's flying uh, there's a lot that I wanted to get to, and I'll get to it as soon as I return. Basil Chapman sitting in for the 1 o'clock to 2 o'clock hour, where Larry's usually here. Dow's down 67, S&P's up 3. Bit of a divergence there. I'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, 
Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. That I had done this, what we call the Eiffel Tower. This is not a perfect one, but it's pretty close. So you see this move. This is gold. I remember doing this earlier in the morning. I um, I thought I've got to be looking at gold here because it's so important. If gold actually starts to pull back and the dollar does rally, what is that going to mean? Can is it possible? So I'll talk about that in a moment. But we had a big spike from uh, eight o'clock. Uh, that was when, 8 o'clock on which day? Let me just double check. That was yesterday. Uh, and it pulled back. And then that 200-period moving average kicked in as support. The 9-period moved up and gold went to this high at 2 o'clock yesterday at about this time yesterday, I, I think. Let me check. 14 at uh, 2.20 uh, on the 25th. And today is uh, 1.43 on the 26th so yeah and then it went to that peak a little doji candle pulls back holds the nine period moving average holds green and it went under the 14 and then it went to another peak abcd so i like to look at this and say is this like a, a a narrow rectangle formation and there's a whole connotation that goes with the, with the rectangle formation <clears throat> most importantly what i wanted to show you <clears throat> excuse me is that there was a drop below the 200, which was so fantastic as support, it went under it, closed above it with what I call a Chapman Wave Roman candle. Uh, but that Roman candle took a while before it closed above it, and then it spiked, and it went straight up, and then came straight down. I had no choice to put an up arrow because we've already had three buy modes going to peak D, E, and D again, so that negates all of these. It means if you go below it, you're now starting fresh. So I put an up arrow, but I didn't think it could last, not with that candle. When I was looking at it this morning um, at about 6 o'clock, and I was drawing this in, and then it suddenly spiked, I thought, ah, oh, that's not going to hold. What I didn't have a chance to do, and I want you to do, is this is the technique that I do. Look, all I do is I grab the left side bar, I go to the high. Sometimes I don't go to the high, the peak, I go to another candle, very important candle. In this case, I like the high, and I would have done this. I would have said, this is green. I'm going to put in another bar on the right side of exactly the same duration, right here. Oops, right here. This becomes green. And then what I've got is bar symmetry. The left side number of bars equals the right side before it comes back and retests it. Easy technique, easy peasy. And then it goes under the 40, the 200 period moving average, and it makes this Eiffel Tower straight up, straight down. It's more like a pyramid, but it's close to the Eiffel Tower. And then I can also put this in to show that it took it out decisively over there. 
This is the bar symmetry. It, it, it was a tad late. It took it out. And now you've got an equal number of the distance. And this says, just be careful, because if, if gold starts to slide under 1992, this is a 10-minute chart, that's going to be not good action. We've got, um, we've got a call. We've got Larry in Wyoming. Larry, how are you? Yeah, good. How are you, Basil? Hope you're I'm doing well. Good. I'm doing very well. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm all, I guess I'm obsessed on it. I w <laughs> you just discussed UNG, but um, I'm here at home looking at my monitor screens, and honest to God, it, uh, it looks like a classic, uh, if it's a new bull pattern, if we saw the low, it's, it looks like a Gartley buy, and I know you look at, it has, you know, it had a failed up ABC, which yes. means a U in your world, and now it's into the, the Gartley, the down arc. So wouldn't this be the place you buy and just put a stop under the swing? The, so let, you know. let, let me do this. The instrument that you choose to follow has to have legitimacy. It has to have currency. It has to have some backbone to it. My contention has been for quite a while for subscribers way back. I, I don't even remember. I don't know if I've even still got it yet, but this is way back in uh maybe it was february i'm not sure <laughs> we had a trade on ung just a very brief trade took a tiny loss and for ung that's 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 you're great to have a tiny loss and then i said you know there's something wrong because every time it got to a point this is natural gas folks this is and if i go to the natural gas this is a continuous contract that i'm looking at right now trading at 2.79 down 0.15 so when I say it's got to have currency, it's got, I don't mean currency, currency, I mean it has to have um, uh, some kind of, some kind of background that is saying this is a tradable and not something that's starting to fall. Do you remember when crude oil went down to minus 40 in the futures? I mean, yes. nobody, could, nobody, I, I, to my mind, it was just almost an impossibility that it could do that. I mean, I wouldn't even say that. I never even thought about it. Let's put it that way. I never, never even considered that it could happen. Well, well, I've been saying for a little while that the chart, I don't know about the fundamentals, but look at this. This is the daily on the left. Look at this weekly on the right. Ever since it made a high back in, I think it was September, well, let me just check, September, oh, August, the week of the 26th, and the continuous contract at 11.40. It's just made essentially lower highs and lower lows over and over, except for this one little flurry in um, uh, October through November where it had a little peak A, peak B, minus. This is a dreaded H pattern and failed. So I'm just saying to you that I've looked at this so often. Not only do people ask me about it, but I keep saying, wow, what a beautiful entry point it will be because it's at a low but you, now, you, now you've run out of time. You've got the cycle of natural gas as heating is gone. We're into the spring and summer, so that's gone. Number two is every time it's had a chance to not just rally, but rally with some veracity so that the weekly chart could really cross positive. And look at this move that we had from $7.14. Uh, yeah, $7.14 on the 21st of February. All the way, and this is a spectacular mm -hmm. move. It went to 9.99 uh, mm -hmm. on the uh, 3rd of March, but I was very hesitant in this move. I said, "There's something not right about it. I can't pinpoint it what it is." And then what happened is, not only did it gap down, but this is the Eiffel Tower, straight up mm -hmm. and straight down. And what happened was. It kept making lower highs and lower lows. And this last move where it made the dreaded H pattern, you know, I talk about that, and then held very nicely at the 627 low and had a gap up and then two good candles, well, doji candle, then a good follow through, and then it pulled back. And the nine period moving average for two sessions went green and now it's back to pink. There's just something wrong with this. And I, I there are three things that I can tell you about it. One is that... Um, the the rallies that have failed to garner follow through support in the weekly, and look what happened in that weekly chart in, in October when it rallied. Look, 
the nine period moving average in the weekly chart stayed way below the 14 period moving average not a single sign of a buy, buy there and the the MACD and the histogram improved a little bit but it got not even close to crossing positive the stochastic was still way down under 20 percent and the on balance volume was overboard there's something wrong with this and I, I would I wish there was a way of of actually calculating how much money has been lost in UNG rather than the amount of money that people thought they would make. You want to hold on because I, I want to tell you what yeah. I look for. I just want to I'll mention a through. couple things on the weekly. Yeah. Okay, Kevin, yeah. let's, get, let's talk about it when I return. Okay, we'll be right back, folks. We're with Larry looking at UNG and natural gas. Dow's down 150. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. We're going back to Laurie. I just want you to show you the technique that I'm discussing. It's live. This is nothing I could make up. From the low that was made in the E mini at 10:30 this morning, and the 10-minute chart at 4,081.25, we went to peak A, peak B, peak C. Then it started to fail. If you count the number of bars to the upside, count the number of bars to the to the left side. This is the exact bar that it should touch. And what was the low? Four four o six. 408.225, what would we be looking for? 408.125, so there's still a little time left. So, okay, so Larry, tell me what you're looking at in the weekly chart. Okay, on the week, yeah, just first of all, on the monthly, because it was a, basically a Eiffel Tower type thing. That is an Eiffel Tower, to, yes. You know, war. 
I'm going to discount that tech, the technicals because it's miles okay. below the Fine. That's 14 period enough. EMA okay. or the yeah. oscillator and change line. But on the, uh, my argument on the weekly is that um, it looks a lot like back in uh, June of the 20 where they had that sideways accumulation. Currently, we're above the oscillator and change line on um, the weekly, and we are at a you know a full retrace of 1.618, actually below. So there so was that, another period back in um, December of 21 where it, it had similar behavior. Yep, I'm looking so, at that now. I mean, do that, you that, just that, wait? You'll I know you you'll just wait for it to literally close, um, maybe with volume, I suppose, with, above the uh, four, 14, basically, correct on the in daily. The chart would be like eight seventies, eight seventies. 870s I'd say whoa now that's different but let me you brought up something that I didn't look at I notated but I really haven't looked at it I'm going to do a little work tonight and tomorrow in my show at 10 o'clock I might be able to do another hour later in the day but I will talk because you're absolutely correct there are similarities here but my contention is that this has changed as a trading vehicle there's something going on that is different to normal and that's the part that I wanted to discuss but you brought up the good point I'll do some work Larry thank you very much uh, for discussing it folks check out my opening call the newsletter and I, this is the time to be getting it because we are starting to put in some positions and uh, for the webinar coming up Wednesday a week, we're going to be discussing a lot of stocks. We're looking at what to buy in this quarter coming up for the next couple of months. I'll be back uh, tomorrow. Have a great day. Stay tuned for great work. Building wealth, trading